This is a press release being sent to over 250 media outlets. Please contact Greg Anthony at the Investigative Journal. Remember the Alamo Ministry, pastors framed, children kidnapped, land stolen. In 2008, a well-orchestrated SWAT team raid took place at a peaceful Christian ministry in Falk, Arkansas, the culmination of FBI, IRS, and BATF harassment. All big nationwide media outlets were contacted, and they were quick to convict Pastor Alamo of child abuse. The ministry, depicted as a cult, its members, brainwashed victims, children, rounded up like cattle, the state saying their lives were in danger. And anyone listening to this story on the big nightly news channels was given the impression another cult had been toppled. As the days went on, the story continued to receive nationwide coverage, but one thing conveniently left out the ministry side of the story. Jumping on the bandwagon, a number of daytime talk show hosts like Oprah Winfrey featured the story, echoing the same one-sided coverage. Even people like Matt Damon chimed in, saying, I'm glad he's in jail. The Alamo criminal trial, la trial lasted all of 10 days with a 175-year prison sentence imposed. The media, again, quickly proclaiming justice served, while a small minority, never heard in the press, called the worst kangaroo court ever. The future child court custody cases rendered the same verdict to ministry parents. Children taken into custody fostered out never to see their parents again. Again. The media proclaimed justice served and a small minority, never heard in the press, claimed state kidnapping since no abuse was ever found. Then came the civil cases still going on today to take away the ministry property in an ongoing effort to wipe them off the face of the earth. Now the question must be asked, was justice ever served here? We at the Investigative Journal think not. After 10 years of investigating this case, we find one of the biggest travesties of justice to take place in the history of this country. If the truth be told, the Alamo case will show there is no freedom of religion or speech here any longer. Please contact us at the Investigative Journal so a tragedy like this never happens again. We have the facts never told in court or in the press to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that one, Tony Alamo was framed and imprisoned for 175 years for his political and spiritual views, violating all constitutional pr protections. Further, no evidence was ever found of child abuse in his case. Children were taken at gunpoint and forever placed in the state custody when no abuse charges were ever proven. And three, the ministry land has been illegally taken and confiscated by the state, violating all constitutional protections. Please allow me the opportunity to present this case to the American people in order that this tragedy doesn't happen again. Whether you have a publication or print, television, radio, in the mainstream or in the alternative, contact me for an interview at gregbeacon at gmail.com, Greg Anthony, JD. And thank you. Here is a six minute video showing the true nature of the Alamo ministry, never told before in the mainstream media. The central purpose and mission of the Tony Alamo Christian Ministries is the Great Commission to bring the gospel to the whole world as Christ commanded, to feed the hungry, to visit the sick and imprisoned, and to offer help and hope to a lost and dying world. Our doctrine has always been and still is the Old and New Testament of the King James Version of the Bible with no private interpretations. God's word means what it says. From its early years in the 1960s in Hollywood, Pastors Tony and Susan Alamo formed the church and patterned it after the first Christian churches in the Book of Acts. As it did then, our ministry still operates as a cooperative, interdependent body of believers, working together and supporting each other in our newfound salvation. All resources brought into the ministry are used to provide for the needs of the members and everything above is used to spread the gospel throughout the world. As the ministry quickly grew, we labored in fields, hoeing cotton and working in vineyards and orchards to provide food, housing, clothing, 
transportation, and eventually TV broadcasts, which featured our zealous choir and orchestra, comprised of former hippies, drug addicts, and people from all walks of life, converted to Christianity and completely rehabilitated through our ministry. These programs also featured testimonies of new converts, one to the Lord by pastors Tony and Susan Alamo, and a message of salvation through the blood of Jesus Christ by Susan Alamo. Our ministry is now worldwide, reaching across the United States and into many nations through radio, books, and Bibles, and the distribution of powerful gospel literature, either purchased or printed at our own facilities. Staffed by our own skilled volunteer printers who are in turn supported by the ministry. We also distribute audio messages duplicated at our own facilities. Many other needs including finances, food, water wells and fresh water tanks, clothing, vehicles and housing to name a few are regularly provided to ministries and individuals overseas. All materials we ship throughout the United States or overseas is free, including postage and handling. Our worldwide outreach serves thousands of pastors and evangelists, and they express their thanks in the many letters and emails we receive daily. A sampling of these letters is always printed in our gospel literature, which is translated into many languages. Our translation department works with United Nations translators and other professionals and volunteers to accomplish this. We maintain the Alamo Ministries website through which we receive large volumes of requests for free gospel literature, Bibles, and other needs. Our website receives traffic from 55 to 70 countries per week. We also distribute literature by the millions Bibles and audio gospel messages in major cities and small towns throughout the United States. On each piece of literature are the addresses of our locations where worship services are held every night and free nutritious meals are carefully prepared and always provided at all of our locations. Also on each piece of literature is stated that we provide a place to live with all things necessary for life to those in our United States locations who truly want to serve the Lord with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength. We list our telephone line answered seven days a week around the clock by ministry members ready to answer questions, to pray with people, and to take their requests for literature, Bibles, and other assistance. It is for these and other ministerial purposes that we have pooled together to work for, buy, build, renovate, maintain, and pay utilities and taxes on our various properties. These are our homes, our apartments, our places of worship, our cafeterias, our schools, our gyms, and warehouses to care for our families and to carry out our missionary work. Every member of our ministry knows and understands that we are the owners and beneficiaries of these properties and all the resources and holdings of our ministry. We prepare the meals. We eat in our cafeterias. We worship at our gathering places, whether they be church structures, dining rooms, or in our homes. We work together so that we can reach out more effectively, visiting hospitals and nursing homes, providing food and other needs and supplies for needy families, delivering food by the truckload to missions, food kitchens, and disaster sites. We are Christian, law-abiding individuals who of our own free will have joined together as a church, a corporate body of believers, to do all we can for the Lord by working together to reach out to every soul we possibly can and share the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ.